Well, hey there, all you YouTube warriors, internet folks. It's the one and only, the Sinister Minister, coming at you again with another road vlog. It is uh, about a few days before Thanksgiving. I hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, my uh, my GoPro battery is dead, so I'm actually going to try to shoot this um, with my Galaxy Note 4 camera. This is the least the video portion of it, and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, it could could just have audio. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it depends. Uh, I had to move my camera, and it's just a whole big pain in the ass. But at any rate, I really, uh, really feel compelled to really get this off my chest. Um, it's something that's actually been bugging me for a while now, for, for uh, you know, many, many months as of recent, but many years overall. And I've had a few interactions recently with some people, and it really has brought it to the to the surface, um, and, uh, you know, basically what I'm talking about is, you know, it's like some celebrities or some semi-celebrities that are, that are out there that are doing their thing, whether they're an actor or a musician or whatever, and the, they're being, the ones that are just being somewhat disingenuous on how they gain their success. Um, some people are extremely, you know, forthcoming and honest. Um, some, uh, you know, fabricate. You know, some are just, uh, you know, telling tales or being really vague and, and, and not very descriptive and stuff. And, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a successful business owner. I've, I've had a successful business for the last 10 years. And I came up with an idea. I had a, an idea, and it's a niche business. Um, certainly, not everybody's doing it. Um, we've we've had we've you know had some competition you know pop up over the years. We were the first, um, but you know competition's good and healthy. Um, but again, we had an original idea. It was a niche business, and you know we're doing it and continually doing it strong uh, to this day. You know, not without tremendous struggles, failures, um, oh my goodness, a lot of successes, you know, and I'll be honest, some of, some of my failures, some people would consider them to be successes, you know, some I consider to be a failure, but others might consider them, uh, like I said, a success, uh, it just depends on, you know, your perception of, you know, different, uh, scenarios, but my, my bitch is, uh, like I said, celebrities, semi-celebrities, or whatever, who are going above and beyond what they're known for. Whether, like I said, whether you're an actor, musician, whatever, and you're trying to give advice to people, and you're trying to motivate people, and you know, and again, I think you're in, and and you're being disingenuous about it. And if you don't understand what that word means, get yourself a good, get yourself a Google. But if you're not being really forthcoming and you're not being honest with things, um, you know, some people out there uh, to be successful get lucky. Um, some people, a lot of people, have to work hard at it. Um, I didn't, I'm not one of the lucky ones. I definitely had to work hard at it. Um, I made tremendous sacrifice to get where I'm at now. And I, and I mean sacrifice on a gigantic level. I don't mean just, you know... Oh, I had to go without, you know, you know, what, you know, a cell phone or I had to go without, you know, eating out for a year or something. I mean, I sacrificed time. I sacrificed friends. I sacrificed relationships. I sacrificed, um, you know, a, a path of life I could have went, but I chose this path instead. Um, and, you know, it's... It, and I, you know, I've put other vlogs out about, you know, very, very much, very informative information, I, I think, you know, as far as, you know, what it takes to run a small business and in and, and the specifics and details. But, you know, some of these celebrities out there and, you know, like I said, they want to give advice and they, you know, they don't want to be, uh, you know, you, you know, here's my thing. 
like when I ask questions, I expect to get an answer. And if people feel like I'm prodding and stuff, well, they're the ones that are coming out and saying, you know, putting out, out information and I'm just questioning it because I have questions. That's what we do. When people put information out there, what's it to question people? Um, but I'll give you a couple examples of, of other celebrities, you know, um, that are being more honest. Like you look at Donald Trump. Okay, Donald Trump didn't work his ass off to get where he's at. Now he has over the years, but his initial start was from his father. His father was a real estate developer, a huge real estate developer in New York. And then, you know, obviously when he passed on, you know, he left, you know, tremendous amounts of money and and everything else to Donald. And he was able to pick up the ball and run with it. So it's not like he had a fucking, you know, work, you know, 70 hours a week to earn the money to finance his first, you you know, real estate purchase. He had funding. Okay. So, you know, and, and it's no secret and I don't think he, you know, uh, you know, says it any other way. Now, yes, he's had to work hard. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I'm saying about as your initial. What was your, what was your initial idea? What was your initial funding? You know, did you have to sacrifice to get that um, initial, you know, that initial push? Um, you know, did it cost you? I mean, did you have to work hard to get the money to do whatever you had to do to invest? You know, if you if you worked your ass off to invest in a situation or your own business, um, which was in my case, then, you know, it's a lot more compendable because it's from the ground up. Um, See, my business, we own everything. Everything that's happened, every nickel we make, we've made, we've earned ourselves. We don't owe anybody anything. And I, what I mean that is, I mean, I don't owe anybody anything to our, to, to, to our success other than our clients, um, the people that have trusted in us to utilize our service. Um, that's uh, who I owe thanks to. Those are the people that were trusting and wanted a, 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 a high-end service, and that's what we give them. But we didn't get, you know, I didn't go to like my grandma or my mom and, 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 and uh, get like $10,000, you know, loan or something like that. Uh, it, it, nothing could be, you know, <laughs> further from the truth, uh, you know. Um, but anyway, so, you know, that's that situation. Like another, and I'm talking Donald Trump's still one of my idols and one of the people I look up for is a, is a, is a businessman, a successful business guy. Um, another one is Gordon Ramsay, and I've been following Gordon Ramsay for a very long time. I know all there is to know about Gordon Ramsay because I'm very much into cooking. Um, I love to cook, and I've I've seen everything he's done, every British TV show, every everything. Um, and I read his book. I have an autographed copy of his book, and I uh, yeah. And he's his start was very you know was very hard worked and hard earned. I mean, he started out with nothing, and you know. And built a, his empire off of nothing. He, you know, he literally worked his ass off and got everything that he's, he's, he's achieved this far by working his ass off, taking huge risks. And like Gordon Ramsay's one to talk about his failures. He's had like three restaurants that failed, one of which was in his hometown. Uh, he opened up a restaurant in his hometown in Scotland and it failed. And he has no problem talking about that and his open, you know, is very vocal about talking about his failures. Um, because in business, you're going to have failures. And it's, you know, if you're going to talk about them, then talk about them. You know, don't gloss over the fact and just assume that people are going to, uh, you know, uh, assume that you had failures and stuff. Some people maybe haven't. Some guys, you know, you know, uh, create an app and create a, 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 a website like, you know, say Facebook or something, and it's a big hit and you just, you're on a snowball roll uh, to success. You know, other guys try and fail and try and fail until something really takes and um, and happen. In my situation, you know, I, I tried a few a few business things. I tried um, uh, DVD sales. I tried selling adult DVDs. Uh, I used to buy adult DVDs in huge bulks and sell them on eBay, and that didn't go over very well. I ended up um, with a whole shitload of porn that I, I forget what I did with it. I think I threw a lot of it out, actually, because um, I just kept shuffling it around. But, you know, I tried that. That was one of the things I tried. Um, you know, I've, one of the other major things I've tried, I've tried a bunch of little stuff, you know, selling certain items on eBay. You know, I'm not really a crafter or anything like that. But, you know, I it's just, I think that if, if people are going to come out there, celebrities and semi-celebrities, if they're going to come out there and talk about how they're a success and how they're, uh, you know, where they came to be, 
don't be afraid to talk about every be open be honest i mean if you're going to be an open book if you're going to talk about anything then you might as well talk about anything you know and the most recent uh you know i gotta say the most recent interaction i had was with um with the guy chris franzak from attila and i had been talking you know he had posted a video about how he's trying to help people and you know and and, and he wants to help and and, and you know his life was uh, he wasn't an overnight success and all this stuff and and i asked i asked a simple question as to okay well and and it was kind of like um a question from a previous video because he posted a, a video series of uh having i guess when he had his warp tour he was doing some kind of entrepreneurial talks which i don't know other than being in attila and having a t-shirt company i don't know what else he's done that is real entrepreneurial uh you know that's been a true success um and, and has been sus- life sustaining I, I don't know but apparently he's you know an entrepreneur okay sure anybody could call themselves an entrepreneur you know you could have a, a, a paper route and call yourself an entrepreneur um you know but you really need to have you know a solid background to it and but here's the thing if you're going to say that you know like in his little um entrepreneurial talk you know he, he mentioned there briefly that he had failures and he tried things but he didn't go into details about it well i'm a firm believer is people are going to be able to relate to you if you tell stories if you that's the only way people are going to relate to you or your situation or what you're trying to sell them is if you can if they can really uh relate to a personal story or a personal situation Where they can say, you know, I did something like that or I felt that way or now I can see why that didn't work out and stuff. But just to say, oh, yeah, I had failures. I was an overnight success. Well, I I don't think that's necessarily true. Sure. uh, You know, the band Attila has been successful um, and it's taken many years. You know, they what started in 2005. I actually only found out about Attila this year and I'm actually a fan. I love the music. The lyrics leave something to be desired. But the music, the energy, the the intensity of the music, that's what I love. Um, and I love, uh, you know, Chris Franziak's, like, vocal stylings. I think he's extremely talented. I think he's uh, he's got a huge range of uh, vocal abilities. I mean, he kind of runs the gamut on different vocal stylings, certainly within the metal genre. genre. So I'm very impressed by that. Um, and again, I'm, I've become a fan. I've become a, a, a pretty big fan. Uh, I love the style of music. I, I play music myself, and I'm the style of music that I play is very much in line with, you know, Amur and Attila style and corn and stuff like that, real jumpy, staccato, high-energy type stuff. So I really dig that. Um, but what I don't dig about is celebrities and semi-celebrities. And I say semi-celebrities because, you know, I think guys like in smaller bands and stuff are known, but they're not like, you know, we're not talking about Brad Pitt here or nothing or, you know, uh, Harrison Ford or, or James Hetfield or somebody like that maybe. But you know, I I got it. You know, I got it. Got in this little this little back and forth with this uh, with Franz, and it was you know I was just asking him like, man, I'd love to hear some about some of your struggles and stuff. I mean, you talk about it like, what were your failures and stuff? But and he feels like you know I'm being too personal. Uh, why should I? Why should he have to get that deep with me? Well. You're, so you're just you're what you're doing is you're just being extremely generic with people and you're just you're throwing out generic shit oh if you have an idea don't lose your dream oh uh, if you have a dream stay with your dream and and all this stuff well that's that's all that's all bush league shit that's you know that's what what's please man you know any people that have dreams that stick to them but you know what have you know what you know what changes a dream it's life Life will change a dream. I don't say give up on your dream. I say it will change your dream. It will alter it. And you can't change that. Um, You can dream all you want. And you can have ideas and stuff. And that's great. And you never know when that idea or that dream will come to a a more uh, 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 reality. But the bottom line is, you know, you can't sit around and... and, uh, um, uh, you know, and dream all day and, 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 and just plot ideas and stuff. You know, if you have to work and you have a family or even if you just have to work and support yourself, you know, it takes, you know, you can't, 
you know, say, oh, okay, I'm just not going to quit my job and go be a musician. It's harder now than ever to be a successful musician that can financially support himself. I had two dreams when I was, I, I had dreams and I still do. I had two major dreams when I was growing up. I want, there was two things I wanted to be. I wanted to be a rock star. And by rock star, I mean a successful musician. Or I wanted to be a businessman, a business owner, because my father was a successful business owner. And he passed away in 1985 when I was fucking 11 years old. Now, I wanted to be, a, he, and he also was a very successful uh, musician uh, locally uh, in Alabama, where he was uh, from and where he grew up and stuff and where he lived. Uh, he was very successful in business and in music. Um, so I wanted to emulate my dad, but that was also my dreams. Well, I spent years, I spent over 10 years trying to become a rock star. I was in very successful bands locally. We did a lot of things. We just, I just couldn't find the right members. Um, I was extremely motivated. I had the funds. I worked my ass off. I had full-time jobs that I worked and I would put money into stickers and shirts and March and merch and all kinds of stuff and, and, and promotions and marketing all before Facebook, all before MySpace. Back when bands actually had to go out and promote themselves um, and actually you know hit the streets and pass out flyers and do all that shit um, something that newer bands and bands certainly within the last 10 years have no concept of um, so you know um, I tried 10 years to do that and when you know after at a certain point I realized like you know it's just it's got more difficult you have to find the right people and you have to find all the right motivated people and it's not it's not that easy to find um, so, you know, at, at some point, um, I just, I, I didn't give up on music, but I did kind of shelf it for a while. And what I did was I started focusing on, uh, I came up with an idea for a business and, you know, me and my wife started a fucking business and it's been 10 years successful. Um, so I got to, I got to achieve one of my dreams, which is being not only a businessman, but being a successful businessman, uh, amongst adverse, con uh, 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 adverse uh, challenges and I'm not even going to get into the struggles and the failures in, inherently that's happened I can tell you I've lost uh, tens of thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars almost become homeless I came this close to being homeless for the second time in my life I've already been homeless once and I vowed never to let it happen again but in the last 10 years I, we were almost homeless both me and my wife and I want to make a completely separate vlog talking about my failures and successes in business because I think that's important for people to understand. If you're trying to motivate people, if you're trying to um, uh, encourage people to not give up on their dreams, to be successful, then be honest with the people you're talking to and not brush off uh, people that are going to ask questions, whether or not you, want, you, you feel you need to be honest with them or not. Like this conversation, you know, this back and forth on YouTube I had with Franz and Attila, you know, I, you know, he started like, you know, he was cool about it. He wasn't being a dick, I will say, but he was like, came off like, well, why do I have to explain myself to you? I go, well, you're the one out here talking about failures and successes and, and not having it easy and stuff. Well, you know, if you start a band when you're 14, yeah, I, yeah, you're going to be living at home with your parents. I don't know if you lived at home with your fucking parents till you fucking were 25. I don't fucking know. Um, maybe you've talked about this, but I'm a new fan. I'm a fan that just found you out your band this year and that I'm into. And I'm all, I'm all about bands that have gotten and, and, and done what they had to do to be successful. But why not talk about that? Talk about what it took for you guys to be successful. And if it was pretty easy, then okay, then say, look, we had it, we got lucky. You know, we had, we played some big shows, we got seen by the right people, and boom, you know. Next thing you know, it was kind of a snowball. And that's not overnight success, but that's just being lucky or being in the right place at the right time, which is more often than not uh, a very good uh, factor for success. Um, Facebook wouldn't have become Facebook if uh, Zuckerberg weren't in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. So, you know, if it could have been two years later, somebody else could have came up with that idea and been a multi-billionaire. So, you know what I'm saying? Timing is everything. Um, timing is a huge factor in success. People don't, people, I think, kind of uh, don't focus on that or think about that. But timing is a huge factor. You could be at the right time. You could have the best idea, but it could be the wrong time. You could have a great idea, but it's just people aren't down for 
they're not hip to what you're trying to sell right now, but maybe in five years or maybe 10 years ago, it would have worked. It just depends. Um, but if you're not being honest, and certainly if people are going to question, not question, but ask, I'm not questioning anything. And I don't think anybody has to justify anything to me, but I'm curious. I'm just curious about how a person that claims to be an entrepreneur, that how you got to be that point, where, you know, how you see yourself as an entrepreneur. You know, just because you have a nice big house and drive a fucking Ferrari doesn't mean shit because you're paying on that Ferrari and you're paying on your fucking big house. You know, I know guys in Northeastern Ohio that have fucking regular fucking, you know, not, I wouldn't say Joe jobs, but they have better than average jobs and they're driving fucking Porsches and Ferraris. So it's not uncommon. I got friends that have, that sell t-shirts that have come up with t-shirt branding and do it and don't do it on a, on a huge scale, a national scale. I mean, are they millionaires? No, but you know, to come up with a clothing line or just come up with t-shirt ideas, everybody's doing that now. It's called big cartel. You could, you could come up with some cool t-shirt designs and go sell them on big cartel. Everybody's doing it. Every fucking YouTuber's doing it. And every Joe, every regular Joe is doing it. So it's not that uncommon to do something like that. So when you're going to claim yourself to be an entrepreneur, what have you done? Taken the ideas somebody else had and just done your own? Well, sure. And you can be successful at it. But I think a true entrepreneur is somebody that comes up with an original idea and, 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 and pushes through and, and, and really drives home. And, and whether it takes you a lot of time, money, whatever, um, that you really put forth the effort to, to, to watch that idea blossom and, and create your own niche, create your own brand, create your own fucking idea. You know, yeah, you can have your own clothing line. But you know what? A lot of people do. And people sell it. I mean, look, I'm wearing a motherfucking Stay Sick hat right now. I love this fucking hat. You know, um, I've bought other of their merch. I've supported them. I'm a supporter of this fucking guy and his fucking company because I, be I believe in the product. I like it. I like the product. I like the music. I'm going to go see fucking Attila on, uh, on December when they come to fucking Cleveland because I'm a fucking fan and I'm going to support the band because it's a band. It's not a one, a, no, very few bands out there are one person. Now there are a lot of guys out there doing are a one man crew, but in this situation, you know, the band Attila is a whole band. It's not one guy. And, you know, but I just think some guys like him are just not being fully honest. Maybe he's talked about his fucking experiences. I don't know. Again, I'm a fucking new guy to this uh, to this group and to him. And, I mean, I like his ideas. You, you know, he's young. He's 27 or 26 or whatever. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, so when somebody in their 20s, <coughs> to me, talk about having struggles and having, you know, tough times, I don't know if they mean... They had a go. They couldn't pay their cell phone bill and had to live without their cell phone for a month, or they really had a struggle. Like you know, in my back, like I said, back in the day, I, I, I was you know addicted to drugs. I was homeless because of my drug abuse. You know, I had to get my shit together, and I had no support, and I was on my own. You know, but it's 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 true artists and true people out there that have a true story and that are going to be honest about things and where they came from that people are going to relate to. This is why Eminem. Eminem is a great fucking idea. I was never an Eminem fan. Uh, pretty much, I think up until I met my wife, um, like 14 some years ago. And I started listening to his stuff and I started doing my research and everything. And I realized, yeah, he was telling us, he was telling some true tales, man. He lived, grew up with a fucking abusive fucking, you know, drug addict mother and fucking, you know, in Detroit and had a fucking rough go at things and deserves every bit of success he has. Um, because he came from nothing, worked his ass off and fucking became a success. But that's why people can relate. They can relate to having that abusive parent or that fucking, uh, um, you know, having those struggles, living in a shitty fucking part of town, you know, living on welfare. I grew up on fucking welfare and hell, when I started my business, I, we were on welfare. I was making $300 a week when I started my business 10 years ago and I couldn't pay my bills and get food. So we went out, we were on welfare. I had shit to help me pay my electric bill. You know, we had a, a assistance. Of course, I only had it for three months, but that's all we needed was three months of help. And then we moved on. So it's fine if you need that support, that help, but you know, that's a whole nother topic. But as far as being calling yourself an entrepreneur and being and wanting to advise other people, you damn sure better be prepared to fucking go run the gamut of your fucking uh, 
you know, of what you went through and your struggles and your cha- your failures and everything else. Otherwise, I think you're being disingenuous, and I think that you're not being honest with the struggles and the fucking failures that you had. You know, maybe you had parents that helped you and shit. I don't fucking know. You know, I'm nobody's biographer, but you know what I'm saying? Maybe you had uh, help that most people don't get. I don't know. All I know is if you're not willing to talk about it, it's good possibility that it wasn't true. And maybe you did have fucking somebody's help and some kind of support and uh, some kind of financial funding and stuff that you don't want to talk about because it's easier for you to come off saying, oh, struggle this, struggle that. You know, like King, the other band, King 810, another band that I like. Um, but you know what? They talked a lot of shit that they were gangsters living this gangster life and all this shit. And it looks like it's come out that it was all bullshit. They were just, you know, talking shit basically. Well, that's fine and all. But you know what? I mean, you lose some of your credibility if you're not going to fucking be honest with your fans and with the people that are supporting you. Um, you know, you don't have to come from a, a, a fucked up neighborhood and shit, you know, and, and all that uh, to have stories and tell tales and and explain life and stuff like that. Um, you just you don't have to. But if you if you were, just be honest and say, yeah, here's here's what I had to go through. Here was my struggle, and that's it. I mean, I don't understand why um, you know people feel like you know it's uh, I don't know. I, I you know I, I just I'm kind of annoyed with it. I'm just talking about the most recent uh, interaction that I've had, which was like I said with with Chris Franz or Franziak from uh from Attila and you know and again I like the guy I like his uh I like his band I'm gonna go see him when they come to town but he's just another example of people that are out here trying to like want to claim they want to help people but how are they really helping people oh talking a bunch of vague topics and shit like that if you want to know about business life struggles and you want to know about what it takes to be a true entrepreneur and a true success um, when with all with, when every with everybody's against you, when you have no support whatsoever, um, I don't have a list of I don't have a, a, a bevy of fans, uh, you know, supporting my business. Um, you know, it's it's just my my clients, uh, my customers that you know re, uh, you know go for our services and we provide a great service and we're you know again ten years strong successful. But and I but I can be honest and tell you about what worked and what didn't work. And we've tried different pricing models and different kinds of structures and stuff. And some of it's worked and some of it hasn't. Um, you know, we've tried different types of employees, different types of work. You know, work from home people. That some of this stuff worked, some of it didn't. You know, uh, all kinds of things. And I could tell you why things didn't work and why things worked. But the bottom line is, I'm not going to fucking hide. My life, my personal life is an open book. I'll answer any question anybody asks me, and I'll be honest and, and forthcoming because I truly believe in helping other people. And I think by helping people, telling stories and being personal stories, yeah, get personal. How do you expect people to relate to you if you're just going to talk, oh, don't give up on your dream. Everybody should, don't, no matter what people say, do what you want to do. And Oh, my God, that shit, people have been saying that shit forever. Big fucking deal, man. So you had supportive parents. Great. You know, a lot of people don't have supportive parents. My mom told me all the time. Uh, I, I started playing, uh, playing bass guitar when I was 14 years old. And I loved it because I liked playing it. And my dad was a musician and all this stuff. And she she never supported me once. She always said, you better make sure you got a job. Don't rely on music. Oh, you know, she didn't support me at all. But it didn't stop me. I still fucking play music. I built a studio in my fucking house. You know, I, I mean, I, I can do music whenever I want. I can record and play music and, and, and do all that shit now at any time I want. If I want to go play drums, I can go down and do it. If I want to play bass, I can go down and do it. Guitar, do it. The only thing I don't do is sing because I can't sing for shit. So just you don't have to give up on your dreams, but life will change your dreams. That's the fucking that's the thing to learn from here. You can have dreams, but you can't be blind. You can't be like have uh, blinders on to the rest of the world because life will happen. You know, you could be with somebody that could get pregnant. Um, they could have a you could have a kid. Um, life can change dramatically. And, uh, you know, you just have to roll with it. It doesn't mean your dream is lost or your dream is you change your dream. It just means you have to alter your, your, your priorities. 
So I, I think it's, I, again, I think it's very disingenuous and very dishonest and very uh, short-sighted to tell people, no matter what, don't give up on your dream or, you know, you should be able to follow through with your dreams and, and this and that. Well, yeah, but life will happen and life may change your dream or change the, your priority level of where your dream or your, your goals or whatever sit. It's called life struggles. They're real. And real people have them. I'm one of them. And like I said, I'm going to make a separate video talking about the, the, the failures and successes because there are many. It's not, I can't get through in just five minutes. Um, but if you want to know real life shit, if you want to know real life struggles, <coughs> I'll be able to tell you right here, right now, because that's exactly what I'm living and have been living for longer than 10 years. I'm in my 30s and I've been doing it for, uh, you know, my, I've been, you know, uh, in, uh, I've been on my own since I was 16 years old, you know, on my own, supporting myself since I was 16 years old, dropped out of school and went to work to support myself. <coughs> So nothing is unachievable. I am the American dream because I've been through it all. I've been through addiction. I've been through fucking family bullshit. I've been through disloyal family members and disloyal friends. And I've been an absolute 100% success uh, due to my wife and due to the, the, the very, very limited people around me and due to the clients and customers that we provide our service to. Uh, which in our for the business is you know for my business has been successful. But anyways, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go fucking run in here to Costco and go buy great quantities of stuff in uh, you know at, at discount pricing um, because I'm a special member and I got that kind of a hookup. I mean, if you wanna you know if you if you need that Costco hookup, let me know. I'll see what I can do. I can talk to people maybe help you out, you know what I mean, it's for, you know, it's for specialized elite people like myself, you know, buying, you know, uh, a, bu a whole bunch of stuff at discounted prices, but at any rate, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, again, I'm just trying to fucking, you know, just, these, the, I make these videos because, you know, I just have to get things off my chest, if you don't like what I have to say, that's great, read the fucking hat, it'll tell you exactly what I think about it. You know, it's called having an opinion. Welcome to the fucking internet. You're allowed to have opinion. Can you disagree with my opinion? Absolutely. Do I welcome your, your disagreement? Yes. If you don't like what I say, fucking tell me. That's great. I'm not going to beat you up over it. You have your opinion to disagree with my opinion. That's the way, that's, that's how, that's freedom of speech and freedom of life. We all have it. It's fine. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I got extremely thick skin. And, you know, you're not going to fucking burst my bubble or anything like that. It's cool. Uh, but anyways, I've been going on and on enough, long enough now. I got to go into this Costco and go pick me up some sushi for lunch. Because that's how we roll here in Northeast Ohio. Costco shopping and sushi. Yeah. But at any rate, this has been the Sinister Minister, your friend, your, 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 your uh, pastor. Signing off. I'm here to tell you thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, you know what I, you know what it is, man. Take it easy and let's keep it sleazy. And we'll see you in the next video.